Karen Ward Mahar just gave all these forgotten women uh, a voice in history. I think she wrote just a brilliant book with women filmmakers in early Hollywood. Hi, I'm Annie. I'm Annie. <laughs> and this is a review of this brilliantly well-researched book about women uh, in the film industry in early Hollywood. And it was really an eye-opener for me. Uh, as uh, I did hear of some of the women mentioned in this book, I did hear, for example, about actress Mabel Norman. I knew she was a famous actress, but I never knew she was also a highly successful producer. And there were lots and lots of uh, women that had their own uh, production company back in, in early uh, days of Hollywood uh, back in the early 1900s. I did hear of directors uh, Alice uh, Guy Blanchet and Lois Weber, but I always thought these these women were uh, the exception uh, to the rule that men ruled a uh, Hollywood. But this was absolutely not the case. I also heard of Mary Pickford, who was a famous uh, actress, but she uh, and I did know that she started her own um, uh, production company. But she did this with started this production company with uh, fellow actors like uh, Charlie Chaplin and some other uh, famous Hollywood people back in the silent film era. I did know that. And there were much more women who directed films. There were much more women altogether, uh, not only in front of the camera, but also behind the camera. So how did it came about? How did, did it came that women were got, got so many opportunities uh, behind the camera as well. And why had they all, but I think one disappeared altogether from the scene, Hollywood scene. For that, we have to go back to the early days of filmmaking in the late 1800s, begin, beginning of 1900. And uh, filming was a technical thing. The cameramen, well, mostly they were men, as it was a technical thing to do, operating a camera. The, they decided what was to be filmed. And these were short clips uh, with no real story in them. They were dances and they were uh, happenings going on. But later, not soon um, after that, the, uh, they decided or they found out that they could paste together the film strips and thus make longer stories. And the film uh, strips, the film, uh, they was longer. So as they could film uh, longer, uh, at longer uh, at one time and paste pieces of film together. They uh, found out, I think even Alice Guy Blanchet, Blanchet invented the story in the film, the long story uh, in the film, but I could be wrong, but I thought she did. And as the story was uh, entered the film, women started to get more involved in filmmaking because the general idea was that women were uh, more moral, uh, had more moral values and people uh, 
got worried that when men <laughs> started to make films, there was much too much violence in it and much <laughs> too much dirty goings on in the films. Enter the woman. So women started to direct these stories. Women uh, started to edit these stories. There were uh, women uh, producers uh, that were that became uh, important, and there, 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 yeah, now there are more reasons uh, that are mentioned in this book. I won't go into detail ab about it, but that's why. Um, only the only uh, occupation and that was still um, the the domain of men was the camera uh, operators, but in all other uh, capacities uh, of making a film, these were mainly women, often women, more often women than men. So why? Did all these women disappear? <laughs> well, there are a lot of reasons mentioned in this uh, book, but the main reason uh, I think is that uh, making films became a business and uh, Wall Street uh, got involved in the movie making business as well. And you can't have women <laughs> controlling the business side, <laughs> the money side of the business. Now, can you? <laughs> so that is, uh, well, that is uh, uh, an, uh, an important uh, reason. Another reason is that film studios uh, entered uh, the uh, process of making films. Uh, it is really more complicated than I explained, but for that you have to read this. I advise you to read this highly well-researched uh, book. But the silent film era was not only an exciting period for the new women of the 1910s and 1920s, but uh, and it w gave a lot of women uh, opportunity, job opportunities and car career opportunities, but it was also uh, good for the women who went to see all these films because they got to see uh, all kinds of heroines, female uh, heroes uh, that uh, did daring stunts and did all things uh, <laughs> that were associated with manliness as well. Uh, and yes, in the silent film era, uh, most of the stunts were done by the actors themselves. And you had these heroin uh, serials like The Perils of Pauline and uh, The Hazards of Helen. <laughs> and these uh, women, they, uh, they did not, not only do these harrowing uh, acts, uh, daring acts uh, of heroism, but she all, uh, these women also <laughs> started to rescue uh, the not the damsel in distress, but the men <laughs> in distress. Uh, and I must bust a myth here because everybody, most people think uh, of this uh, cliche that in the fi silent film era there was a woman uh, tied to the tracks, the railway tracks, and a man a rescuer rescuing her in the nick of time. There is absolutely no scene that happened like that. And I must say, it was even the scene in the silent film era where the heroine, the woman, rescues a man tied to the railway tracks. But this was really turned around in uh, later uh, 
films that were made later uh, that depicted uh, the uh, that changed uh, this uh, view of the silent film era i think there was a film made of the life of a pearl white i think it was pearl white I'm not sure yet, but she, I, I think she did uh, The Perils of Pauline. And uh, they changed that, they changed in this biographical film, uh, they changed it to a man, uh, the, to a man rescuing the woman uh, in the, uh, on the railway tracks but I have to research more of that that particular incident isn't mentioned in this book but uh, it was it is this is really I must say I can uh, to, con to, to draw a conclusion I must say this is a really well researched book of the silent film era. I must thank Karen Ward Mohar for giving these women a voice in film history and not only in film history, in history, uh, females in history altogether. So I can highly, highly recommend you read this book. Oh, and don't be disappointed when you order <laughs> this book because it is a cheap, probably it's going to be a cheap print on demand uh, copy. But don't be disappointed uh, because uh, it is professionally designed, not only the cover, but the layout as well. So it is really, really uh, uh, comfortable to read. There are photographs in it, but they are of poor quality. But uh, don't be disappointed because the contents of this book really makes up for it. I can highly, highly recommend women filmmakers in early history. As always, thanks for watching.